You know, growing up in Central Florida, I used to do a lot of coon hunting. Most of it I did in the orange groves. The people who owned the groves didn't mind because the coons would ruin a lot of fruit. I had a friend in high school that would borrow his dad's pickup, and we'd load up the dogs and go two or three times a week. We had a couple of black and tan hounds named Ellie and Smokey, and a tree and walker named Luke. It was easy hunting in the groves because the trees were spaced where the coons couldn't jump from tree to tree. The owners kept the groves disked up so there was little underbrush, and most of them had good roads in and out. We hunted some swampy areas on weekends, but during the week we would hunt the groves because we had school the next day and it was just a lot easier. My friend's family also had a boxer named Sam who was just like a member of the family. He always stayed in the house. I mean, this dog would watch TV sitting on the couch, and then when his program went off, he'd get up and leave. I know you think I'm stretching the truth here, but I'm not. Sam got better treatment than my friend did. Then again, he was more well-behaved than my friend was. I tell you all that to tell you how spoiled Sam was. One day, I think it was on a Friday, we were getting ready to go hunting, and my friend decided it would be neat if we would take Sam with us. That way, when the dogs treed, we could shake the coon out and let Sam catch the coon. I went along with him, of course, but I was thinking the whole time how mad his mother would be if anything happened to her baby. So we loaded up the dogs in the dog box, except Sam, of course, he sat in the front with us, and we headed out to one of the groves we had permission to hunt. It was after dark when we got there and let the dogs out. They scratched around a little bit, and then they took off, except Sam, of course, he hung around with us. When they took off, they headed in two different directions. Smokey went one way and the other two went the other. My friend said, you go with Smokey and I'll go with the others. So I fell in behind Smokey and he got so far ahead that I could barely hear him. And then all of a sudden he started getting louder and louder. He was running the coon back toward me. When he got real close, I got where I could see him when he crossed the road. When he got close to the road, I shined my light where he would be coming out. And as my light hit the road, lo and behold, skedaddling across the road, Running for his life was a full-grown skunk. I'm talking about a spotted skunk. And as far as I'm concerned, it's twice as potent as a regular, everyday, run-of-the-mill skunk, if you know what I mean. I ran over after he got past, of course, and caught Smokey as he reached the road and put him on a leash. Smokey and I walked back to find my friend and the other dogs. I could hear the dogs running off in the distance, and it seemed as though they were getting closer and closer. As we walked up the road, I saw my friend, and Sam, of course, walking toward us. When we met, I explained what had happened, and we had a laugh. Meanwhile, the dogs had got real close, and we decided to turn Smokey loose where he could go and join them. And sure enough, he headed right for the others. We stood there and talked for a few minutes as they got closer and closer. All of a sudden, it dawned on me that they were taking the same exact path that Smokey had taken. Oh, oh, no, my, my friend said. Ellie, Ellie strictly runs coons. Well, well I, said, I said, that coon is following the exact route that that, that skunk did. did. We, we turned, turned and walked back the way Smokey and I had just come from and, from and could tell they, they were, were getting closer to the road. road. About, About that, that time, they crossed right in front of us. You guessed it, just exactly where Smokey had crossed. Hang on, I said. Let's catch them because they're running that skunk. That's exactly where I caught Smokey a while ago. Ellie don't run nothing but coon, my friend said. I looked down at Sam, and I promise you, he was grinning at me. She is tonight, I said, but that fell on deaf ears. They ran for a little while longer and then treed. They treed in a part of the grove that had died out and been replanted. The trees were just six or seven foot tall, and they were real bushy. Look good before you shake it out, I said, but of course Ellie didn't tree nothing but coon. So he got Sam and commenced to shake him. This was it, Sam's big moment. Crusher Sam. When it hit the ground, Sam snatched it up and started shaking it from side to side. Ellie don't run nothing but coon my foot. That skunk was spraying the whole countryside. By the time Sam had had enough and let it go, he was foaming at the mouth and couldn't see, and the dogs and us were soaked. As a matter of fact, that orange tree was covered. Well, we loaded the dogs up in the dog box, Sam included this time, and rode home with the windows down, coughing and snorting all the way home. When we got home, that's when things really went bad. You talk about a mother's wrath. I feared for my life there for a while. 
but we agreed to give Sam a bath right then and there, even though we were worn out and covered in spray ourselves, so he wouldn't have to spend a night outside. We had more wonderful adventures in search of the coon, but that was Sam's first, last, and only hunt.